Hey everybody, it's your old pal Ron Howard from Extreme Sequences and I'm back with a tutorial this time on my P5 journey. Man, I'll tell you what, I started working with this last night and uh, I'm really glad I know good people like Greg Macri, who I refer to as Panel Daddy from the UK and a little help today from Tom Stallings and uh, some things uh, through all three of us for a loop. Uh, with these uh, panels. As you know, I'm converting my P10s to P5s. They served for four years, and now it's time for me to grow up and be a big boy and go with some P5s for four times the resolution for my shows. And that's what I'm going to do. So I did all the physical stuff. I replaced the panels. I put all the wires together, put all the power in there, all the cables. I attached two color light cards. Why two color light cards? Why not? It's cool. Don't you want to be cool? You can't be cool with only one. Now, look, um, there's some debate on um, whether you should use one or two. And the discussion is I, uh, you get better scan rate performance using two cards with a large matrix. And I have 56 panels. That's seven across, eight down. Seven across, eight down. That's my panel matrix, P5. Remember, P5 panels are 64 by 32 LEDs. Okay, so the way I'm going to set mine up is I'm going to go across four. And all the way down eight, that'll be color card one. And then color card two will be the remaining three across and eight down. So you got to use a little, bit of, a little bit of math, not common core, none of that crazy common core crap, just some basic math. So let's launch LED Vision. And we're going to get into this. And, and don't worry, I'm also going to show you some settings in the Falcon Pi player with my Raspberry Pi 4. That's where things fell apart. Uh, we didn't have a problem, thanks to Greg, getting... Uh, this to work right on the LED vision and getting all the uh, playback to look correct, uh, which is the foundation before you even attempt to go to Falcon Pi Player. But in Falcon Pi 5 Player, uh, it was a hot freaking mess. Nothing looked right. Uh, so you will want to find the software. Go Google LED Vision 5.0 and you'll go find it somewhere. Download it and you'll put it on your desktop. Now, Greg Macri did a fantastic video on this and he's, uh, he's, he's a little more relaxed and slower than I am. I'm moving pretty quick, so I'll make sure. And right about now, I will put up his logo and link so you can go check out his stuff. Uh, he has really taken P5 panels by the, by the horns and he is a subject matter expert with this out of the UK and he's just a great pal. Um, when you do launch the software, uh, do make sure you have your power turned on, your uh, power connected to your color light cards and to all of your panels and it's ready to go. You want to plug the ethernet cable from your network directly into the first color light card. If you're using two, then you go out the other and into the input of the secondary card. Doesn't matter which of the ports you use, they're all the same. It acts like uh, a switch, no big deal. When you first launch the software, it is not gonna look like this. Nope, sorry, not for you. It looks like this when you've done it. I'm just kind of working backwards and gotta fake it till I make it. Here we go. When you install this, you want to click on control. Screen control, the default's gonna be on sender. Make sure you put it on this tick mark. Net card, use net card. Where are the net cards? Gotta have them, detect them. Boom, there they are. Card one, card two. Then you got to make sure you tell it what is the width of your matrix 448 256 don't tell it you got two cards Don't give it any more information than it needs. You're just gonna confuse it unless you want two separate matrices Then you can add that card and there you go The coordinates here is just the window moving around see look over here. Yeah, yeah, don't worry about that Don't worry about that. Leave it over there All right, then you click apply All right, that's good so far then we go to our LED screen settings. And it's gonna ask for the password. And everybody knows it's 168. <laughs> Everyone knows that. All right, detect receiver cards. Again, just go through the motions here. Detect, they're there. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And don't mess with anything else here. Nothing for you to do in this little section here. Just get over here to your screen parameters. And let's take a look. Chipset, normal. Well, normal's good. 64 by 16. I don't know what that means. That doesn't sound right, but leave it alone. Uh, make sure your box setting is the width of your entire matrix and the height. Don't worry about the refresh rate. Leave that all alone. Don't go into advanced. And don't head to intelligent settings. We're not finished setting this puppy up. What I would do, if you are carrying uh, Wally's Lights P5 panels, 
I would make sure you take the profile that he probably sent to you as he did me. And of course, it's the last thing I thought would be the issue with this. And it was the main issue was I didn't load it. And what this profile is, is it tells color light cards that, hey, you can go eight by eight with this profile. And when you load it in here and you'll browse and you'll go to your desktop, you'll bring it in, it's gonna put in here 512 256. That's because eight by eight is 512 by 256. Just change that to 448 or whatever the size of your matrix is, whether it's one card or two cards, doesn't matter, just tell it the right size. We'll deal with the two card debacle in just a moment. It's not a debacle, it's just an issue, okay? Just requires some settings changes. Here we go. So you've got this right now. Oh, yeah, no, don't go over here yet. When you make changes like this, save to the receiver. So it pushes the settings to the receiver. Then go over here. And you're not going to see anything here. You have to set this up. So you want to tell it two columns, one row. And then you got to figure this out. Here, here comes a Rubik's Cube that makes no sense to me. Uh, I would think that the first one should be 256 by 256, but, and the second one should be 192 by 256. Four panels uh, in length, three panels in length, eight panels tall, either one of them. But no, no, here it's gotta be different. It's gotta be wacky wonky. So you just wanna make sure that the first panel, you make it 192 by 256, which is mine, and the second panel is 256 by 256, and then you yeah, click this button here, which tells it start on the longer panels, which is where I'm at, and work yourself to the end of here. It just, you would think intuitively it would be the opposite, but it's not. And the way you find this out is after you save to receiver and go through the rest of these steps, you're gonna see the uh, fruits of your labor with, uh, with this uh, turning on your matrix. And suddenly you're gonna see, well, why is the LED pushed over this way and it doesn't look right? It looks like it's flipped. Then you come back over here and you finagle in here just a bit till you get it right. So send a receiver, boom. Now we can go back to our screen parameters where we are looking for the intelligent settings. I've always loved the word intelligent. All right. And holy moly, it's like Jesus walked in the room on me. It is bright in here. Bright, bright white everywhere. My panel is on every LED just blinding me. Full color, yeah, that's probably a good idea. Why would you want virtual color? Let's get real, full colors in. With, this is not gonna say 64. Make sure it says 64 if you're using a P5. Change it now, 64, and ignore the rest. Click next. Now we're ready to go through some tests. And what this is gonna do is gonna bounce from black and then white. And then black and then white, except not as fast as that. And I just don't have time to wait for it. Next, then it's gonna say, great. One is a little bit darker than two, and it goes back and forth, a little bit darker, a little bit brighter. Just go next. Then it's gonna go red, green, blue, and black with the top 16 rows of your entire matrix, and it's gonna cycle through those colors. Do cycle through all four just to make sure they're the right color. Yeah, there we go. Next, how many rows are lighting in a module? Well, <laughs> French for module is your entire matrix in this case because I have 16 white, LEDs from the left to the right of my matrix on. Next, how many lights are on now? It should just be the one top row. It is, yay, next. And then you get to this. It's like, oh my gosh, am I playing bingo with my mom again in 1979? No, you're not. <sighs> you're gonna see a light on your matrix, probably blinking. That's probably in the number one position. I sure hope it is. And if you have two cards, you might see it in two positions. You know, they're both number one position, but you might see two lights. Just take your mouse, click here and drag across the top. If you make a mistake and drag down here, because you're all freaked out, hit the reset button that you can't see right now because it's already done. Drag this across, scoot this over, continue dragging until you get to the end. Then go back to the front. Click on column one, row two, and do the same thing. Drag, stay in the lines, stay in the lines. How many times supposed we tell you, stay in the lines? And then it's like, boom, hey, look, you've done something. And then you'll see this big light from behind you and you'll turn it around and it'll be like, ah, it looks like the screen. Look at that, boom. 
and you're just like so giddy with excitement you can't wait to get over to your falcon pie player and start testing with the lights yeah click finish will you stop the excitement and you're done with this just know that uh you'll never ever have to come back with this once you have this set up correctly but the main thing to get this to work right was having the profile loaded in here. Now, does that work for the other vendors out there? I don't know. I don't know, you'll have to check with them. Okay, so I'm gonna close all this down, close all this down, and I'm gonna change the cables. Oh, look, it's a meltdown at the Howards with my kid screaming. I hate you, COVID-19. All right, um, I'll come right back, give me one sec. And we're back. That was so fun. It took about 30 seconds to change the cables around, no big deal. Remember, important with the Pi player, and I'm running a Pi 4, is to the input from your inner, from your network needs to go into the dongle, which goes into a USB port, and then the output from the Pi into the first color light card is through the metal jacket looking output thingy dingy on the Raspberry Pi 4. When we get to our Falcon Pie player, here we are, standalone mode. Nothing in here to see, folks. This is pretty boring. Uh, you will see that there's an IP address up here, but I'm not seeing the one for the output, and that could be a problem, right? Oh, but there it is. It just needed to refresh. It's important that you see two IP addresses. One here is the IP address to the Pi. The other one is the IP address that gets to the color light card, all right? And all we care about is the LED panels. We don't care about pixel strings, Artnet, DDP, all that kind of crap. Nah, 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 nah. We don't care about that. All we care about is enabling output, setting up the correct order of the panels, making sure the scan rate is correct. I had set this set this to uh, one eighth because I think that's what my other ones were. But if you look at the back of the panel, it will tell you what it is. And uh, Tom Stallings picked that out right away. He goes, hey, what's the scan rate? I said, I don't know, one eighth? He goes, look at the back of the panels. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> so, eh, being a noob is fun. All right, so I start at the left corner. Yep, yep, yep. Set to color light card. Yes, yeah, start channel one, BGR, color orders, pretty important and then the interface if you get this wrong you get nothing outputting from the Pi to the color light card so this is set to ethos zero I would assume yours should be two then you have the order of your panels whichever way the arrows are pointing make sure that this is correct this is the way it works for these panels that I have from Wally's lights boom done all right you can study that take a screenshot if you want sure go for it all right we're done there uh, if this is all set up correctly, you would hit save and it's going to tell you to restart FPPD. You do that. Great. And then we're ready to go over to our status control, display testing, and we will click on, I think I'll just reveal blue and tell it to feel. And if everything was set up correctly in the software here, LED Vision, and you have your panel set up correctly in the output, and when I click this enable test button, I should have blue in my room. Oh, I do, I do have blue. I have blue in my room. This is beautiful. And the panels look great. Now, if you want to, you can uh, check the other colors. It, it doesn't hurt uh, go with green. Yep, great, green. And it's red, red. And let's go with bright white. That just hurts my head. My least favorite color of all probably is just bright white on a panel. Just. Doesn't look good, doesn't look good. Uh, but the blue is soothing and somewhat relaxes me, which is great. Okay, so there's nothing else to see here. This tells me that we have a completely configured matrix. The only thing left now is uh, to change my P10 panel matrix out in X lights for a P5 so I can increase those render times, yay. And uh, we'll be good to go. If you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, have a great rest of your day. See ya.